coming up this morning for you on Daybreak. Authorities have found the man responsible for a shooting coming from a domestic disturbance yesterday that left a woman injured. And people under the age of 21 could soon be banned from purchasing tobacco products in Springfield. Plus, find out more about an event in Springfield that aimed at educating the community on intervention and prevention of violent situations. All that coming your way on Daybreak. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It is Thursday, June 6th. I'm Joe Morano. Lauren Barnes out on assignment today. And we've also got Beth Finello joining us this morning in for Lisa Rafa. Beth, how are you this morning? Yeah, Bright and I'm, early. We're, we're ready to go. We it's, are. We're already matching. So we did so well today. We walked in and we realized that we had the so, same pattern. So we got that going for us. That's not That's bad. That's a good start. I will say, very warm yesterday. Yes. And I woke up this morning. You know, a few hours ago at this point, just a few raindrops here and there on my car as I noticed that. Are we yes. seeing any more of that today? Yes, yep. Scattered showers and storms throughout much of the day today. So, right now here in Springfield, uh, temperature sitting at 66 with a north wind at about three miles per hour. It is it's not raining in Springfield right now, but it, it is a little wet outside from overnight showers and storms that we saw. We do have some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms. We've got a flash flood watch in effect for much of the area, including Springfield and Greene County. That goes until 7 a.m. tomorrow because we are expecting some heavier downpours through the afternoon. We've already got a flash flood warning in effect for parts of Vernon County where several inches of rain fell through the overnight hours. So make sure that as you head out the door, leave a couple extra minutes and never drive through the flooded roadways. Otherwise, things are pretty quiet through the rest of the Ozarks. Temperatures at 66 in Springfield, 68 in Branson, 70 already down in Mountain Home. Winds relatively calm, and I do think the winds will stay calm today, but it is going to be a very warm day. Not like yesterday, but temperatures will be in the upper 70s and lower 80s. We've got scattered storms today into the overnight, again into tomorrow, and possibly a wet weekend ahead. Good news is we do dry out at the beginning of next week. We'll do details in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Beth. We start now with what's making news now. The Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce is hosting the Good Morning Springfield event today. Hannah Zettel is in studio right now with a preview on Mayor Ken McClure's scheduled State of Springfield address. Hannah. Good morning, Joe. The Springfield Chamber of Commerce hosts these networking events monthly. Only once a year will we hear individually from the city, Greene County, Springfield Public Schools, and this morning, the mayor. Mayor Ken McClure will deliver a State of Springfield address this morning. I caught up with him yesterday for a sneak peek. Take a look. We're going to hit several themes. Uh, first is going to be to recognize uh, people in our community, events that have happened. We've had a lot of good things that have taken place over the past year. Uh, we also want to talk about our council priorities. We established four of those a couple of years ago, but we've added a new one, quality of place. And we want to talk about that and really how that reflects. I'll be heading over to the Evangel Cafeteria where that breakfast is starting up at 7.30 this morning. So I'll see you at the 6 o'clock hour. All right, Hannah, thank you very much. We move on now this morning. The city of Springfield could soon raise the age to purchase tobacco products. The Springfield Greene County Health Department is pushing to raise it from 18 to 21. The health department believes increasing the legal age to purchase tobacco will lessen the number of youth smokers. Clay Goddard of the health department says the ordinance doesn't just include traditional products, but also e cigarettes. I think there's a perception that e-cigarettes are safe. 63% um, of Juul users, which is a popular brand, didn't even realize there was nicotine in uh, that device. So I think e-cigarettes is an issue that, that we're uh, thinking about, and those would be covered by this ordinance as well. The city council is set to hear the ordinance on June 17th, and they'll vote two weeks later. If passed, the ordinance will take place 60 days after the vote. We keep crime into focus now this morning. Police have found a man wanted in a shooting that happened yesterday in Northeast Springfield. A 32 year old was arrested in Webster County. We're not releasing his name still yet because those charges haven't been formally processed. Officers were called to a home in the 700 block of North Oak Grove around 11 yesterday. They were looking for a woman who, sh for a man who shot a woman nearby. After several hours, officers eventually used an armored truck to push open the door, but no one was inside there. The woman who was shot has non-life-threatening injuries, and police say this is a domestic violence situation. 
An event at Mercy last night helps people deal with domestic violence who aren't directly involved with it. Community Green Dot Springfield taught people how to intervene before someone is seriously injured. Janice Gerke is a victim's advocate who is part of the Springfield Sexual Assault Task Force. She says people were able to address how to help victims without getting someone hurt. Maybe you can wait until she or he is away from that person and just say, hey, do you need some help? Maybe you're watching. Maybe just the fact that you're watching makes them aware that somebody is paying attention, maybe making that victim know that they aren't alone. With children, the signs may, need, may not be as obvious. Mickey Lane with the Child Advocacy Center says that things like emotional abuse and neglect may not leave marks, but there are some other signs to look for. So you're looking at more like the behaviors of the adults that provide supervision or care, um, how they speak to the child, how they, how they treat the child, um, but then also how the child may behave around, you know, around that person. And community Green Dot Springfield can be reached on its Facebook page for more information on how to help victims of domestic abuse. We move on now in more local news. Warm weather yesterday was a reminder that the heat of summer is on its way. So the Salvation Army and Westlake Ace Hardware are teaming up to help those in need. And, and it's hot. It's hard to sleep when you're hot. It just is. And a lot of people don't have air conditioning, and, and many don't realize that. So we're, we're trying our, the best we can uh, to help those uh, get a little, a little relief from the weather. If you'd like to help out the year, is there's a fan event that's starting today and runs through Sunday, June 23rd at Westlake Hardware on South Campbell. Today, Congressman Billy Long will be in Springfield to speak with local professionals about the ongoing opioid crisis. The congressman will take a tour of Cox South today. Afterward, he will take part in a roundtable discussion that is expected to address the opioid crisis and Congress's work on the issue. That will all get going at 9.30 this morning. We move on with your right to know today. $10 million turns out to be the amount of money that people in the Show Me State donated to a charity that turned out to be a scam. The Disabled Police and Sheriff's Foundation and its founder, David Kennick, collected that money from 2013 to 17. Attorney General Eric Schmidt announced yesterday that a settlement of $10 million was reached but was suspended due to Kennick's inability to pay. The court ruled that he'll have to pay $100,000 to the charity Concerns of Police Survivors, which is based in Camdenton. That one helps rebuild the lives of family members and coworkers of officers killed in the line of duty. And in our political coverage today, legal hearings continued to decide whether Missouri's only abortion provider will continue operating, but no decision was made following those hearings. Planned Parenthood is still seeking a preliminary injunction after the health department declined to renew the facility's license last week. State officials say their concerns involve serious clinical issues, but declined to go into detail about it. If they have any concerns about health and safety, especially grave concerns, they are obligated to outline them in clear words and say this is a deficiency and it's at this level. They have not done that. And Missouri is one of many states that have passed restrictive abortion laws recently. All of them are expected to be challenged in court before taking effect, though. Still up for you here on Daybreak, Beth is in for Lisa with your extended forecast for this Thursday and, of course, your morning money watch. We're just getting started, everyone. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.